The movie begins with a woman waking up Christian Jewel Nielsen, the curator of the ex-Royal Art Museum in Stockholm, and preparing him for his following interview. Later, Christian goes to Gallery 1 and meets Anna, the interviewer, who's a journalist. During the interview, they both seem to struggle. Anna starts the discussion by asking him about the biggest challenge in running a museum. Christian says it's the money. Then, Anna asks about something she read on the website that she needs help understanding. However, Christian needs help explaining museum parlance. Moments later, a lady shouts for help in the streets when she comes across a man and Christian. According to her, a man is trying to kill him and will destroy both Christian and the man. After they leave, Christian talks to the man about how nervous he is with that and then bids goodbye. After the incident, Christian looks for his phone in his pockets and notices that his phone and wallet are missing, presumably stolen in a confidence trick. He then tries to borrow phones from strangers down the street, but unfortunately, he can't borrow one. Meanwhile, Christian is meeting with his colleagues and two journalist men. They're presenting what the square looks like and says that the exhibition will open on September 15th, and they have already done preparations for the exhibit. The two journalists in the meeting then express that it's a lovely project that raises important issues. Still, from a communications point of view, the values are too general, so they need to discuss the difference between art and marketing. They say that for every new project, they need to assess how newsworthy it is. The two journalists continue to say that they need to put a difference in this project for them to be able to cover it on the news. They explain that if not, they will be left with billboards only, causing them not to reach international attention. After the meeting, Christian goes to his office and tells his colleagues about losing his phone and wallet. Then, he tracks the location of his phone on his computer, which he and his assistant Michael trace to a large apartment block close to their office. Meanwhile, a woman named Elna interrupts them, and Christian tells how he got robbed on his way to work that morning. Later, Elna leaves, and Christian follows, but before he leaves, he tells Michael that they will discuss the next steps later. Moments later, Christian goes to a restroom and practices, reads his notes, and rules explaining the project. Then, he proceeds to present it in public. He then explains that the square will represent each of them helping each other. After his speech, he returns to his office and brings food to Michael, who's still tracing his phone. Michael then says they may need to find out which flat, but he's confident it's in that building. Then, he proposes writing a threatening letter, distributing it in the building, and putting it in all the letterboxes. They then start thinking of what they will write in the letter and say they should return his belongings to the 7-Eleven store near their office. When they finished, they printed it and started distributing it in the apartment. When they reach the building, Michael volunteers to watch the car leaving Christian to distribute the papers. However, Christian says people will recognize him because he's a public figure. So he tells Michael to do it because they won't know him. Besides, it's his idea. Still, Michael says he's not the one who got robbed and is only trying to help him, so Christian doesn't have a choice but to borrow his jacket and proceed with the distribution. Christian enters the building and starts distributing the letters in each apartment's mailbox. Meanwhile, Michael is left inside the car, sitting at the back, but when people outside try to open the trunk, he transfers to the driver's seat and locks the doors. Then, a man approaches him, asking him to drive the car. When Christian runs out of the apartment, the man starts to bang the car, so Christian instructs Michael to go immediately. Unfortunately, when Michael drives the vehicle, they accidentally hit on something. When Christian asks to pull over to check it, he looks disappointed. The following day, Christian goes to the 7-Eleven store where his phone will be dropped off and comes across a beggar asking for money. He then says he doesn't have cash but insists on buying her food. After he orders, he asks the crew if there's a parcel or letter for him. When the crew says there's none, he pays his orders and hands the food to the beggar. Later, he's again in an interview at X Royal Museum when a man in the audience keeps interrupting him. With continuous interruption, another man from the audience explains that this man is suffering from a neuropsychiatric disorder causing him to do involuntary movements. Christian then continues with the interview. After that, Christian sets up the SIM card he bought and cleans the scratches on his car. While doing so, he hears footsteps approaching him, so he immediately hides. After that, he calls someone he believes has called him multiple times. Later, he returns to 7-Eleven to pick up the phone package and finds his wallet untouched. Because of this, he goes to one beggar outside 7-Eleven and hands the cash in his wallet. Euphoric after the success of his plan, Christian goes to a party with Michael. On the other hand, a group of people is in the royal palace, where the former private quarters of the king and queen are next door, so they pop in and look. Meanwhile, Christian meets Anna again, waiting in line at the restroom. Moments later, they end up in Anna's apartment and find out she has a monkey pet. Then, they share intimacy in bed. After that, 
Anna insists on taking the protection that Christian used, but even though Christian refuses, Anna continues to insist. Unfortunately, she wasn't able to take it. Anna then returns to the bathroom holding a trash can, asking him to throw it away. Still, he refuses to do so, causing an argument, as she believes he doesn't trust her to dispose of the protection rather than take it. However, Christian still hands it to Anna and throws it in the trash can. The next day, Christian receives a phone call from a woman working at 7-Eleven saying that a parcel has come for him. He then said it must be a mistake because he had already picked up the package yesterday. Still, the woman says the parcel came just a little while ago, holding it as she speaks. Feeling strange about it, he asks the woman to open it. The woman then sees a note inside. It says that the man Christian accused of being a thief wants Christian to ask for an apology, or he will cause chaos with him. Christian then tells the woman that he'll pick up the parcel as soon as possible. In the office, the two journalists return to the building to discuss the project. They say that the project raises many interesting topical and humanitarian issues. Still, the challenge is that they're not competing with other museums but with disasters, terrorism, and controversial moves. So they then propose an idea that they need to harness social media attention with something other than the uncontroversial and bland artist statement. So they consider a depiction of violence to contradict the square's message, wherein they will need a blonde person to do it. Meanwhile, Christian calls Michael, but they ask Christian to join the meeting before they leave. He then goes inside, tells them to run their plan, and immediately leaves with Michael. Then, Christian returns and asks Nikki, one of his colleagues, if she has a driver's license. When she replies yes, he also asks her to come with him. The three then go to 7-Eleven. Michael picks up the parcel leaving Nikki inside the car. Meanwhile, in 7-Eleven, Michael meets the one who wrote the note to Christian, who appears to be just a child. The child asks for Christian and is mad because his parents think he's a thief. Then, Michael explains that his boss got robbed, and they sent the letter to everyone in the apartment. However, the boy claims that Michael is Christian and that he's only lying to him by saying he is his boss. Despite that, the woman says she doesn't know who's right between them, so she asks them to leave because they're not allowed to fight there. On the other hand, Christian meets with Anna, who asks him if he remembers what happened to them the other night. He then enumerates what they did to Anna but misses how they became intimate. Later, he asks her to move to another place and tells her in a lower voice that they have become intimate in bed. Anna then asks him what it meant to him, to which he says that he enjoyed that night. Anna reveals that she likes him and has an emotional connection to him that she doesn't just want to share intimacy with him. When Anna asks if he remembers her name, he struggles to answer and tells her that she pisses him off. Later, he says that Anna is a good catch and that she's lovely. Later that night, Christian is at home, and her two daughters, Lily and Lisa, arrive and seem to be fighting. He tries to calm both of them and tells Lily that she's the elder, so she needs to understand her sibling, but he gets no response. So he talks to Lisa and asks her why they fight like that. When Lisa apologizes, he says it's his fault and also apologizes for raising his voice. The next day, he brings his daughters to the museum, shows them the square, and explains its purpose. Later, when he's sitting and waiting for his daughters, a beggar comes to him and asks for money, to which he says he doesn't have any cash. Moments later, Pauline from YouTube Sweden calls him to congratulate him for reaching 300,000 views. When he asks if what she's talking about is about the artist talk, she says it's the video of a blind child beggar getting blown into pieces. Christian then, who's confused, clarifies about the video and says that she'll call her back about her offer of getting paid advertisements once he learns more about the video. After the conversation, he watches the video and discovers it's about the two journalists' promotion idea. Then, he asks the beggar to watch over their bags and that if her daughters come, he'll tell them that he'll be back in five minutes. Meanwhile, the journalists publish a promotional clip showing an impoverished white blonde girl entering the square and getting bombed. They posted the video on the museum's website and YouTube channel after Christian, distracted at that time, gave approval without viewing it. Later, Christian arrives with her daughters in his office, and Elna shares with him the reviews about the clip the journalists uploaded. The clip goes viral but receives a highly hostile response from the media, religious leaders, and the general public. Christian then tells her that he has nothing to do with the video. However, she says she'll attend a board meeting and wants him to comply with the board's decision. Soon after, when Christian and his daughters go home, he sees the boy waiting for him and confronts him and his two young daughters on the staircase. Christian tries to send him away, but the boy begins to knock on doors and scream for help. In frustration, he pushes the boy down the stairs, though no one comes to his aid. Disturbed, he desperately searches the trash outside the house for a note which contains the boy's phone number. After finding the boy's number and being unable to call him, he records an apologetic video message. On the other hand, 
Anna tries calling him but only reaches his voicemail. Later, in response to the video circulating on the internet, the museum arranges a press conference. Christian apologizes for causing this commotion, mainly because they mistakenly published the clip. He then states he violated protocol, therefore, he's stepping down as curator in mutual agreement with the board. He claims it's a unanimous decision between him, his management, and the board. Several journalists then attack him for stirring up cheap controversy with a tasteless clip. At the same time, others attack him for self-censorship because of his resignation. Days later, he finds the image of the project they wish to project in the magazine. Later that day, he attends a cheer dance competition with her daughters. Then, feeling guilty about wronging the boy, Christian drives to the apartment block several days later and tries to find him and his family. The movie ends with Christian talking to one of the residents in the apartment. The man says he knows the boy he's looking for, but he and his family have moved away. Thank you for watching. Subscribe for more videos like this to help the channel out. Have a nice day.